So today I'm going to be demonstrating how to fill out the ADGA application for registration. This is what the form looks like. So to find the form, just go online, type in ADGA registration form. First thing that comes up, click on it. It's just a list of the ADGA forms. Then click on the registration application one, print it out. It actually consists of two pages. The first one is really the only one you'll need. The second page is this one right here. It just has some information on just general registration, um, naming, tattooing, and grade. So some pretty good info, but it's kind of boring too. Anyway, so let's get started. Um, I'm gonna be using one of my own Dolings from last year. I'll be registering her. This is gonna be her form. So this is an actual form I'm gonna send in. Her name is Bluebell. So first of all, name. First, you have to put your herd name. After you become a member, you fill out a application for a herd name. You basically just send out in your top picks. You can do your farm name or your goat herd name. You want your name to be kind of short. You have 30 letters and spaces total and that includes the herd name. So the shorter it is, the better. My first pick was green tea, but that was not available. I actually looked it up and nobody has used it. So somebody registered it and then they didn't take it, which is really annoying because I would have loved to have that as my herd name. But anyway, so my herd name is Green Tea Goats. And after you register your herd name, you're the only person that can use it. And you can register multiple herd names. There's a fee, I think. I'm not sure what it is though. If you don't have a herd name, you can still register goats. You just put the name up here. They will add a big V at the very beginning. So it would be V other than the name you put. That's basically what the second choice is for in case the first one was taken. But if you have a herd name and you're not doing the same name multiple times, you should be good. And the doe I'm registering is named Bluebell. And these boxes down here, if complete name is not available, we will alter unless you check for return. Especially if you don't have a herd name yet, you want to check that and they'll just let you know if anything's going wrong. Artificial insemination mating, embryo transfer, DNA type prior to registration, DNA test form. But you rarely use these, just if the goat was an AI mating, embryo transfer, blah, blah, blah. Name of sire and his ADGA number. To find your name of sire and ADGA number, you basically just have the sire's papers. And Bluebell sire was Mary Oaks Ebony, so these are his papers. So his name, Mary Oaks Ebony. This is just a regular certificate of registry. This is where the name will be under name. Then the registration ID is right here. That's what you put there. Now, if you don't have a copy of their papers for whatever reason, there are two other things you can do. You can go on adgagenetics.org, um, click on pedigrees, enter the name. So I would just enter Mary Oaks Ebony and click on the pedigree. And then you can find the registration ID. Um, the other thing you can do is just go on adga.org if you own the goat. And we'll talk about leasing goats in a minute. If you own the goat, you can go log in, look up goat, then just check the box that says all the goats you've ever owned, and it'll come up. It'll, you'll have all the goats you've ever owned, and there's the ID right there. Next, you have to say if they're leased or not. Basically, if you use someone else's goat to breed your doe, you would say leased, but I did not lease Eb for breeding. Um, if you did lease, you will also need a service memo, which is a completely different form that you have to fill out and send in along with that. So we're not gonna get into that today, but if you lease, you will need to um, look up service memo. Her dam is Hawks Farm Honeysuckle. And the name and ID for the dam is the exact same. Least, I don't know how that works with those, but she was not leased either. I owned her. Here you just put the breed. Blue is an American Alpine. Color and markings. This one really varies with the breed, but Alpines, goat milk stuff, had a cool blog post, I guess you'd call it, on all the Alpine markings. So if you have Alpines, just Google that, look it up, great info there. Bluebell is a Coup Blanc. If you have Nigerians, there's also a cool website for that. It's like Nigerian Dwarf Colors or something. And they have basically all the colors on there. Nigerian Dwarf Colors are a lot more confusing than Alpines. Anyway, uh, you could probably Google for the rest, but I don't really have experience with those. Conforms to Alpine breed standard. If you don't conform to a breed standard, you could put, you put none. I guess that's just for grades and stuff, but this is just pure red. And she's a doe, you just check which one. 
Date of birth. So you just put their date of birth. That's pretty easy. How many in birth? That's just how many was in the litter. One doe, one buck. And if you have kids die at birth, you still add those. And then horn information. They're pulled, you hit pulled, disbudded, disbudded. Dehorned is when you remove the horns later in life, and disbudded is when you burn them early in life, and then, unless they have horns. And I disbudded her, so check that. Ears, that one's kind of harder. The erect ears are your normal Alpine or Bahosley to Toggenberg, your Swiss breeds that have ears that are basically pointing upward. And blue has erect ears. Airplane ears are ears that are larger and they go kind of straight out. You have those when they're um, basically, I'd say, pendulous crossed with erect. Um, pendulous is basically Nubian, super long ears. They should not have much ear control with pendulous ears, and they should be able to touch in front of the nose. Those are only Nubians. Elf ears are La Mancha ears that are less than two inches. Goat ears shouldn't have any cartilage, and they should be non-existent, but basically up to one inch. La Mancha ears are just confusing, honestly. Um, tattoos. So in the right ear, you have your farm tattoo. And my farm tattoo is GTH for Green Tea Homestead. But to get your tattoo, you basically just fill in your top choices on the member application form. Just do the initials of your farm and then something else. I think I put like GTG as my second choice for Green Tea Goats. Anyway, that comes with membership. That's not an extra form or anything. So if you're already a member, you should already have that. And they'll send you a paper with your tattoo. So that's the right ear. The right ear is the tattoo. Heard name. Left ear, you have the letter of the year 2017 was j 2018 is k 19 is l 20 is m basically it just starts today and goes through z letter each year and they skip g i o q and u and it's listed on the website somewhere if you just google it be sure to check every year before tattooing or registering because you can mess it up anyway um first you have the letter of the year in the left ear and then you have which number kid last year i had five kids and she was my fourth so she would be J4 in the left ear. I haven't even tattooed her yet. I totally suck at kid care of my retained kids. Um, tail web would be for La Manchas. If they don't have ears, you tattoo their tail web. And so you just do right and left the same way, center. Electronic ID, microchip, um, if you do those. You can't do only those in replace of tattoos. They have to be in conjunction in something or other. I don't know, Adga's working on it, but basically just disregard that, unless you do microchips. Um, this is the breeder's name, address, and ID at the date of service. So that would be me, because I bred her, obviously. All right, I'm gonna fill that other stuff in later because this is a YouTube video. Um, my signature and address. I think this is the breeder. Yeah, this is the breeder's signature. A lot of times what breeders will do is they will fill out all of this except the name right here. And then they'll sell the goat to someone else with this paper. And that's pretty handy. So the buyer will just fill in the name. And if you're doing that, you hit send certificate to new owner. You say when you sold them, um, name of purchaser, their ad ID, their address, signature of seller, so just the breeder's signature again, and their ID their ADGA ID. Oh, and the ADGA ID is just, after you register for membership, they'll send you a little card with your ID on it. Pretty simple. But yeah, that's only if you're transferring it to a new owner at the same time of registration. But since I'm keeping her, I'll just leave all of that blank. The fees are over here. She's a doling under 30 months and it is May something other. So she's gonna be 1050. So you just look over here at what you're registering bucks are more expensive if you wait too long it's more expensive if you're not a member which not being a member is extremely confusing it's way easier and way cheaper and more straightforward to just become a member and pay the easier fees and pay the cheaper fees and they they charge more during this time because that's basically kidding season and that's when they have most of their registration going on so they want more people to do it then but I'm doing it now just because and then you have your name and or ID of person submitting application and this is me now, but if it was transferred to a new owner, the new owner would put their info right here. So there you go, that is how you fill out the form. You can pay by sending cash in your envelope, or you can pay online. They'll just add this to your balance, and then you can pay it online with card or whatever. And you send this to this address right here, and then they'll send your registration papers back to you. It'll look like this.